Hey Math 31, I had a question on section 4.3 number 13 and I wanted to do this one on my computer rather than my iPad because I want to show you how I put all that data into the calculator. So here we go, we, we need to go ahead and draw a scatter plot. Now when you want to draw the scatter plot, go ahead and do some data entry first. So let's hit stat and enter. And when I take a look at my lists, I have some old data in it and you may or may not have some old data. If you do, like I do, go up into the name of the list. So you can see here L2 has the black background. Let's hit clear and enter. That's one way to clear out a list. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear out both lists here. And then I'm gonna do a little data entry. So give me a moment to type all of this in. I'll put my X variables into L1 and my Y variables into L2. All right, we've got those, and here we go. Fifty-five, and then sixty-two. Okay, great. And then just do a quick check and make sure you have the same number of data values in L1 as L2. So you can see in L2 I have five data values, right? Because you can see the fifth data value is sixty-two, and in L1 I also have five data values. Uh, if you don't have the same number of data values in L1 and L2, when you go to make a scatter plot, it'll pop back out an error. All right, so now let's go see what type of stat plots I have. So that's a different two-button two um, command. It's second and y equals. So let's hit second and y equals. And if I look at what I have here, um, the way this calculator is set up right now, all of these are off, which is great. If you want to turn all of your plots off, you can hit 4 and hit Enter and just turn them all off to kind of reset yourself. But I do want to put one of them on, so let me go back into it. And I want to make a scatter plot. So this scatter plot, it's the first icon here. So I need to change a couple of things. I need to turn my plot on, I need to highlight a scatter plot, and then we'll talk about L1 and L2. So let me turn this on. And then let me go down and highlight scatter plot. And then your calculator typically defaults to L1 and L2, which is great. So we've got yet another two button command to actually see your scatter plot. We're gonna go zoom nine. So once you have that scatter plot set up, it's two buttons, zoom nine, and there it is. I saw, I don't know if you saw it briefly, I saw something like a little scroll up in the upper right hand corner. And what that's telling me is that if I go to my Y equals screen, I have something left over from a previous problem. So if I look there, I guess the last time I graphed something, I was graphing X cubed. So if I clear that out, you won't see that little scrolling anymore. And it's not a big deal if you have it, I just want you to see what that means. And sometimes if you leave a math function in, you'll actually see it kind of graph on here. So just be on the lookout for that. Now in terms of this question, it says, hey, if we wanted to know when the temperature would be 28 degrees, would the answer involve interpolation or extrapolation? Well, 28 degrees is within this, this data set, right? 28 falls somewhere between 25 and 30. So that would be an example of interpolation. If this had said 38 degrees, that would have been extrapolation because 38 is outside of my given data range. Now this says eyeball the line and estimate the answer. So if I look at this, it's a little hard to see what this window is. I can see a couple of tick marks here on the x-axis and a couple of them on the y. So let me hit my window and it looks like I'm going from an x-min of 14.6 over to 31.4 and that's because they're taking my smallest x value 16 and my largest one of 30 and going just a little bit to either side of that. Same deal with the y min and max but instead of having an x scale of 1 I'm just going to go down here and make this 5s and so that my brain is working I'm just going to go 10 to 35. I'm going to make them whole numbers, multiples of five, just so I can see them. And I'm, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go from 40, and let's go just to 65, and then I'll go by multiples of five. Now, whenever I adjust my window like that, don't hit zoom nine, because it'll send you right back where you were. I'm going to hit graph. All right, and now I can, I can take a look at things a little bit better. So if I look at this, I think I was starting at 10, so this would be 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, right? And here I was starting at 40, so we've got 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65. So I've got five unit tick marks on the x-axis and I'm going from 10 
to 35, and I've got five unit tick marks on the y-axis, and I'm going from 40 to 65. Now let me just check, make sure I had my numbers right. Yeah, 10 to 35 and 40 to 65. Okay, so let's try and eyeball this, right? I wanna go 28 degrees of freedom, not degrees of freedom, 28 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So 28 would be somewhere here on the x-axis, right? And if I wanted to scroll up, I kinda think if I was gonna be on the line, my ordered pair would be somewhere around here, right? Because the line would come in like that. So if I wanted 28, it would be somewhere around here. And if I want to count that up, if you imagine I could click on that right now, even though I can't, but if I want to look at that Y value, it's pretty close to this tick mark. So that would have been 40, 50, oh, excuse me, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So pretty close to 60. And that's why you see over on this answer here, that when I, I had a slightly different scale here, I did go by fives, but when I got to 28, you see that ordered pair hanging out up there, and I thought that the Y value would be pretty close to 60, which I used a slightly different scale over here on my graphing calculator in the video than I did on the one that I screenshot for your homework solutions, but hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, that you go over to an X value of 28 and see what we predict the y value would be, because that's what interpolation and extrapolation involves, and really that's what regression involves. Taking some data, putting a math function on top of it, in this case a line, a linear model, and then predicting with it. Alright, so I hope that helps for number 13. Thanks so much everyone. Bye!